apart from how the future descendants of modern organisms could evolve and how life might evolve on another planet. The third major subgenre of specchivo is alternative evolution. This can be thought of as alternative prehistory, or speculating as to how different life on Earth would be today had things gone differently in its ancient past. Arguably, the most discussed question is how different the world would be had the end Cretaceous extinction not happened. Many have proposed that some kind of dinosaur would have evolved sapiens and given rise to a civilization. Perhaps the most famous proponent of this idea is David Russell, who hypothesized the dinosauroid, a bipedal humanoid descendant of the brainy Truodon. But before we go there, I think it's important to get some perspective on this. Remember, the dinosaurs reigned for so long that T. rex and Triceratops are closer in time to us than they are to Allosaurus and Brachiosaurus. 136 million years passed between the beginning of the Jurassic, when dinosaurs became dominant, and the end Cretaceous extinction. Meanwhile, 65 million years transpired between the end Cretaceous extinction and the present day, less than half the time that the dinosaurs reigned. So, the idea that if we gave the non-avian dinosaurs that extra 65 million years, they would evolve sapient intelligence seems quite dubious. But what I don't see too many people asking is how likely would a dinosaur civilization be in the future? You might ask, how could this be? Aren't they extinct? Well, the KT event wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs, but of course birds survived, and as the term non-avian dinosaurs implies, birds are dinosaurs. On top of that, some, like the corvids and parrots, have intelligence levels comparable to primates. Furthermore, parrots have highly dexterous talons, which allow them to hold things, and the craniofacial hinge on their upper mandible, which allows them to manipulate objects with their beaks. Birds and mammals evolve many features convergently, such as endothermy, greater intelligence, better hearing, a wide range of vocalizations, and extensive parental care. But not only that, their trajectories are quite similar, with intermediates between them and the more basal amniotes, that being therapsids and dinosaurs, evolving features like legs beneath their bodies, and a greater metabolic rate. On top of this, I think one overlooked case of convergent evolution is that between the parrots and simian primates. I mean, sure, it's not as visually subtle as the wolf and thylacine, or golden mole and marsupial mole, but they both have high levels of intelligence, are very social, highly vocal, adept climbers, have similar diets, and have dexterous digits. Given that the levels of intelligence between parrots and simian primates are comparable, with some being as smart as the great apes, if you go back, say, 5 million years, it could be said that it was just as likely that a parrot versus an ape would develop civilization in the present day. I say 5 million years ago because it was 3.3 million years ago that we find the oldest evidence of tool making. So, a little while before that, our ancestors would have started to become more intelligent than the other apes. You might argue that a parrot's talons aren't as nimble nor as dexterous as our hands, but neither is a chimp's hand. The reason we're so good at manipulating objects is because we have a lot more gray matter in our brains than the other apes, which facilitates fine motor control, and five million years ago, this feature probably had yet to evolve in our ancestors. Furthermore, Parrots famously have a far greater range of vocalizations than non-human primates, with some even having rudimentary language learning capacity, a feature that began to evolve in our ancestors 2.8 million years ago. So, if aliens visited the Earth 5 million years ago, they may have thought that parrots, a variety of dinosaur, would be the most likely candidate to give rise to a future civilization. If humans were taken out of the equation, Getting zucked by some vague means, as is the case in a lot of spec evo, who knows, maybe some kind of parrot will evolve sapiens and give rise to a civilization millions of years down the road. But going back to alternative prehistory, if the KT extinction hadn't happened, would reptilian humanoid dinosaur lizard people like David Russell envision be a possibility? Well, first let's talk a bit about comparative vertebrate anatomy. If you look at the skull of a mammal or a bird, you'll see a very prominent brain case, while it's barely noticeable in other reptiles. 
If you plot the frequency of the brain to body size ratios of the diapsids, i.e. reptiles, as a histogram, you'll see that the birds and other reptiles form two bell-shaped curves. This is what's known as a Gaussian distribution, and in each curve, you'll have a mean where the peak is, and as you venture away from the peak, a greater and greater percentage of the total values will fall within the range of your brackets until you get to a point where 95% of all the values fall within them. This is what we call the 95% confidence interval. Going back to our histogram, not only are the peaks distinct, but the 95% confidence intervals for the birds and reptiles lie within distinct ranges. Birds are a variety of theropod dinosaurs. So, let's try to get an idea of where they fit into the dinosaur family tree. If we make a phylogeny of the theropods with some celebrity dinos, Dilophosaurus would be the first to branch off, followed by Allosaurus and then Tyrannosaurus, with Velociraptor and the birds forming sister groups. Going back to the histogram, Dilophosaurus and Allosaurus would fall within the range that the other reptiles do. T-Rex would fall just outside the 95% confidence interval, while Velociraptor barely falls inside the 95% confidence interval for birds, as did Truodon, the hypothesized ancestor of the dinosauroid. Now, birds did evolve in the Mesozoic, but when did this take place, or at what point did the dinosaur start being a bird? Well, under the phylogenetic definition, a bird, or a member of the clade Aves, is a descendant of the last common ancestor of all living birds. But dinosaurs would have evolved other features characteristic of birds before then, most famously flight. Archaeopteryx, which lived in the late Jurassic, is widely considered to be the first bird and was flight capable, albeit not as good as most modern birds. Like the Velociraptor, it had a brain to body size that barely fell within the 95% confidence interval for birds. Between Archaeopteryx and the common ancestor of all living birds, stem group birds evolved more distinctly avian features, such as Confuciornius, who evolved the pygostyle tail 125 million years ago. Because bird skulls are quite delicate, they don't often preserve well during fossilization, which makes it hard to track how their brains evolved over time. However, we can use phylogenetic bracketing to get an idea. If we make a phylogeny of the living birds, the first division is between the paleonaths and neonaths. The paleonaths are the ostrich, emu, rhea, kiwi, cassowary, and the timonaus, while the neonaths are all the other birds. The neonaths then break into galloanserae and the neoaves. Galloanserae are what we often refer to as fowl, i.e. chickens, turkeys, quails, ducks, and geese, while neowaves are again all other birds. There is only one species of crown group bird, that which includes all descendants of the last common ancestor of all living birds, known from the Mesozoic, which is known as Asterornis. This bird has features characteristic of galliforms, i.e. chickens and their relatives, and anseriforms, i.e. ducks and their relatives, indicating that it was a close relative of the common ancestor of Galloanserae. So, we know that not only did the common ancestor of all extant birds live before the end Cretaceous extinction, but the common ancestor of the neonaths did as well. In terms of the brain to body size ratio, paleonaths are also near the edge of the 95 confidence interval for birds. The galloanserae are on average less intelligent than the neowaves, but there's quite a bit of overlap between the two. All this to say that by the end of the Cretaceous, prehistoric birds reached a level of intelligence on par with modern birds, putting them way ahead of any contemporary non-avian dinosaur. So, if the asteroid not hit the Earth 65 million years ago, it would be far more likely that a bird versus another variety of dinosaur would evolve sapiens in an alternative Cenozoic timeline. Although, I guess it's still possible that one of the more intelligent non-avian dinosaurs could evolve sapiens, but there are still problems for Russell's reptilian humanoids. Most notably because the dinosauroid supposedly evolved from Truodon, and Truodon wouldn't have looked reptilian. Pretty much all of the most intelligent non-avian dinosaurs were close relatives of the birds, and would have had feathers. So the dinosauroid would have looked like some kind of weird avian humanoid versus a lizard man.
but is there any way to get the reptilian dinosauroid to work? Well, we know that the common ancestor of dinosaurs had feathers because species on both sides of the dinosaur family tree had them. But this doesn't necessarily mean that the common ancestor was completely covered in feathers like modern birds are. Now, at what point did the ancestors of birds and their relatives first evolve a full plume of feathers? It's hard to say exactly when this happened, but we found a tyrannosauroid known as Eutyrannus from the early Cretaceous, which was almost completely covered in feathers. This means that full plumage dates back to the common ancestor of the Solurosauria, the clade which includes tyrannosaurs and birds, and this is also when greater intelligence started to emerge in the lineage that gave rise to birds. The theropods, which branched off before then, may have had mostly scaly skin, but they wouldn't have been any more intelligent than your one of the mill lizards. So, it wouldn't have been any more likely that they'd evolve sapiens, let alone a humanoid form, than one of the more intelligent saurians like monitor lizards today. The only feature that could be said to make them more predisposed to evolve a humanoid shape is their bipedal stance. And even that's not as much of a head start as it may first seem, because Russell's dinosauroid had plantigrade feet like us, while dinosaurs had digigrade feet and lizards have plantigrade feet. Although many like to imagine that had the KT extinction not happened, dinosaurs would be landing on the moon by now, when you look at the facts, either a dinosaur or reptilian humanoid civilization wouldn't have been more likely than it was in our timeline. I guess alternative prehistory can make imaginations run as wild as alternative history. But if you have something to add or an alternative view, I look forward to reading your comments. Thanks.